Hey Math 43 years, Miss Abreu here. Uh, we're going to take a look at our Chapter 1 Sampling and Data Lecture. You can find this file, the blank version, if you go onto Canvas, Files, Class Handouts by Chapter and look at Chapter 1. If you see just the word Lecture, that's the blank version. If you see the Lecture Key, that's going to be my typed out answers and this video is going to go through my handwritten answers. You have some homework coming out the end of this chapter. When you see something like 47 through 67 odd, that's 47, 49, I can do it, 51, 53, all the way up to 67. And then you got the rest of these here. Uh, there's a little typo in your book. I do love your book because it's free, but it comes with some typos. So for 84A, the problem should have set the ages between 55 and 64 but they transposed that one digit. They wrote 54 to 65. So here's the correct version. By the end of this chapter, you're gonna pick up a bunch of vocab. So I will want you to recognize and differentiate between key terms and statistics. So like I said, a bunch of vocab. We're gonna create and interpret frequency tables, whether that's frequency in and of itself or relative frequency. And we're also gonna learn about various types of sampling methods. Uh, there's five types that we're going to take a look at in this course. So let's get some vocab down. So statistics is the science of collecting, analyzing, and drawing conclusions from data. And then that leads to our next vocab term, data. They're the values or measurements of variables of an event. And this idea here, variables, you're going to hear me say this the entire semester. Every time you read a problem, start to identify what is the variable in this problem? What is varying amongst my sample? And in terms of a sample, we're gonna, we're gonna define that in just a moment. So the entire collection of individuals or objects about which information is desired is called the population of interest. And a sample is a subset of the population selected for study in some prescribed manner. Now this prescribed manner, we're gonna talk about once we get to sampling methods. All right, so the population, it's everybody that you wanna get information about, um, whether that's people or objects or animals or widgets, whatever it is. So we got our population of interest and it's very tricky to go after everybody in your population. It's tricky, it's time consuming, it's just not that much fun. So statistics was created because instead of going after a population, we'll go after a sample, a smaller part of this population or a subset. And we'll get information about the sample. And if our sample is, is well created and well constructed, if, our, if we have a good sample, then the data and the conclusions we get from here can get applied to the population of interest. So, so let me give you a for instance. Imagine if I, I tasked you with finding out um, the average amount of money students spend on books this semester and I wanted you to do this for Chabot College. It would take you a long time to go after all 17,000 students at Chabot. You can imagine how much time and effort that would take. So instead of going after a population at Chabot, the entire set of the student body at, at Chabot, maybe go after a sample, a smaller subset of them. Maybe go after 100 students at Chabot, find out how much they spent on books, and then infer that to your population. As long as your sample represents your population through all sorts of, of different categories. I would want, if I was talking about Chabot, I'd want my sample to represent my population in terms of gender, in terms of majors, um, in terms of where you lived, how many units you were taking, whether you were part-time or full-time. All of those factors, I would want my sample to just look exactly like my, sub, uh, my population all right, but just a smaller version of it. And then we'll find information about the sample and infer that to the population. All right, when you hear the term census, let me scooch this up. All right, so when we hear, hear the term census, a census is a sample of your entire population. And we're coming up on 2020. You may have heard in the news that the census is going to take place um, in the year 2020. As per our constitution, we have to take a census every 10 years. And this is to figure out how many representatives we have in Congress, how many hospitals we need, roads we need, how much federal funding we're going to have. 
And they only do it every 10 years because you can imagine it takes a long time to actually track down everybody that lives in the United States. Uh, at the last census, it was around 310 million people they tracked down. Um, and and we only the other reason we only do it every 10 years, well, it's because the Constitution regulates it, but also the country as a whole doesn't change that much from year to year. So they just want to measure this every decade. All right, so if you actually sample your entire population, you're running a census at that point. So when you hear me refer to parameter, a, rep a parameter is a number or a fact from a population. So I just want to point out that the P words go together, okay? And the reason I point out that is because when you hear this term statistic, it's a number or a fact from a sample. So the S words also go together. All right, so if you run a census, you get a parameter. If you just have a sample, you're gonna get statistics. These are both numbers. They just come from different places. Statistics come from samples. Parameters come from populations. It is so much easier to find a statistic than a parameter. The only way to find a parameter is to run the census, and we try and avoid this at all costs. That's why this whole class exists. How do we get good statistics? How do we get good numbers that are pretty close to these numbers? but take us less time and money to find. So that's what we study in here. How do we find these statistics? And then once we have them, what do we do with them? Okay, so we're gonna do three examples about identifying your population, your sample, and yeah, population and sample. So here we go. The student senate of a university with 16,000 students is interested in the proportion of students who favor a change in the grading system to allow for plus and minus grades. For example, C plus, C, C minus, rather than just a C. 400 students are interviewed to determine their attitude towards this proposed change. What is the population of interest? And what is what group of students constitutes the sample in this problem? So as I start to go through this, let's, let's take a step back. I can see that I've got 16,000 students at my school. All right, and I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna ask them whether or not they favor this change in the grading system. And for all we know, this could happen at Chabot. Right now, we do have that system where it's just a C. There's no discrepancy between C plus C or C minus. You just get that letter grade. So maybe we could go through and, and run this at Chabot. Hey, do we want to change this, this grading system? But rather than talking to all 16,000 students, you can see right here, I'm only going to talk to 400 students. All right, so if we start to take a look back and try and answer this question, where it says, what is the population of interest? And what is the sample? I can see right here, and I'm just going to use my highlighter for a moment. My 16,000 students are my population of interest, and my 400 students are my sample. Okay. So let me go ahead and write that down. So my population all 16,000 students at a university. And my sample is just that 400 students. Okay. Now in terms of the variable here, all I'm, that's gonna be varying amongst these students is whether or not they agree with this grade system change. So I will go up to one of these 400 students and say, hey, do you favor a change in the grading system to allow for plus or minus grades? They'll either tell me yes or no, and I will keep track of that. All right, so with that, I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so going through there, we've got 16,000 students, population, 400 students, sample. Now, I'm gonna get some kind of number from this sample, and I'm just going to make this up. Let's say my sample proportion, let's say 100 out of 400 students agree to this change, which would be a 25% or a decimal of 0.25, 25% favor it. Is it possible that if I really talk to all 16,000 students that exactly 25% would also agree with this change? It's possible. 
it might be closer to 30% or 20%. It's probably not 80% if my sample proportion is only 25%, but we think this, this number here, this statistic, might be close to the true parameter if I was going to run the census. And that's the idea of stats, is you just, you find your stat, right? I get my sample, get my number from it, I call it a statistic, and then I say, well, this statistic is hopefully close to my parameter, and again, the only way I can find that parameter is if I run the census, but I lack the time and money, so I'm just going to take my stat and approximate my parameter with it. We usually give ourselves a little bit of wiggle room. That wiggle room is called a margin of error, which we'll get to in chapter eight. And we're obviously not there yet, but, but that's the idea behind statistics. Instead of going after all 16,000, go after a sample, get a number and say, hey, that number is probably close to the number I would get to this. And I didn't have to spend the time or money. All right, so I'm gonna go through with examples two and three. I would suggest you hit pause on this video and then you try and do examples two and three, and then check back and see if you got the answers correct. All right, so as we scooch this up, let's take a look here. So example two, representatives of the insurance industry wish to investigate the monetary loss resulting from earthquake damage to single family, single family dwellings in Riverside, California in January of 2009. From the set of all single family homes in Riverside, 370 homes were selected for inspection. Describe the population and sample. All right, so if I'm taking a look, I can spot my population. It's right here. I'm going to go and see this phrase, all single family homes in Riverside. All right, and you can imagine, I don't know exactly how many people live in Riverside, but I bet it's a large enough city. I mean, they have a UC, so it's a lot. There's my population. And you can see here, I'm only gonna talk to 370 of those, those single family homes. All right, so we've got all of that going on. So let me write this out. So my population is all single family homes. In Riverside, California. And my sample is the 370 single family homes. In Riverside, California. Okay. And in terms of the variable here, I would go up to each of the, the homes in my sample and I would just ask them, how much earthquake damage did you sustain? Uh, or I should say, what was the monetary loss from the earthquake damage you sustained back in January of 2009? And I would hope that whatever number I got from here, let's say the average family had $60,000 worth of damage. Well, I would hope that if I really ran the census, that the average number off of our population would also be 60,000. All right, statistics come from samples, parameters come from populations. All right, so if we look at the next one, the supervisors of the San Mateo County are interested in the proportion of property owners who support the construction of a sewer system. Because it is too costly to contact, I see this word, all 100,000 property owners, a survey of 500 owners is undertaken. Describe the population and the sample for this problem. So let me go ahead and I could see this right out the gate that I've got all property owners here making up my population and 500 owners are gonna make up my sample. So let me just write that out. We've got population, all 100,000 property owners and my sample. 370, oops, not 370, sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. <laughs> Excuse me, 500 property owners. Okay. So if I just take a step back, another thing to notice with all three of these problems is that the population is always the larger number, right? 16,000 population, only 400 for the sample, 
right? All single family homes, only 370 in the sample. All 100,000 property owners, only 500 in the sample. So your sample is always a smaller subset of your population. The only time your sample is not a smaller subset is when you're running the census. And when you run the census, I wanna just reiterate, if you run the census, you get a parameter. We very rarely run a census. So usually we're running a sample and we're gonna get a statistic. Okay, so moving on to the next page.